Michael Kay, Paul O'Neill, and Buck Showalter. And Michael, I'll start with you. As you look at that at bat by Brousseau, it wasn't like Chapman had lost anything. He was throwing 99. He was throwing 101. But he couldn't find a way to put Brousseau away before he took him deep. Well, the longer the at bat went, uh, the, the more the advantage goes to the hitter. Uh, Paul has taught me that over the years as well. You know, you just showed the Altuve home run, and everybody got on um, Chapman for losing with your second best pitch. He got a slider that Altuve hit out. I wonder if that was on his mind and on Sanchez's mind, because with the foul ball straight back, straight back, straight back, it was clear that Brasso was right on the fastball, and maybe the pitch to, to, to throw there is his newfound splitter or the slider, but he's probably thinking, I can't lose with my second and third best pitch. So he came at him with a fastball again, and he hit it out. The only difference this year is this wasn't a walk-off. The Yankees still had an opportunity to get the run back, but they weren't able to do it. All three runs in this game came via the home run. You know what, Paul, I wanted to talk to you about the Yankee lineup. We knew this was going to be a tough matchup because of all the Rays relievers and how they were rested and their high leverage guys. That's not easy for a lineup to try to back to back hits or maybe stack some runs together. Well, Glass, no. I mean, you really have to get respect for him. I mean, uh, two days rest, get through that lineup like he did. And then I thought Kevin Cash did a great job by bringing Anderson in. Anderson's a guy that you want closing the game at the end, but he brought him in because the game was so close. And all of a sudden, he got through a couple innings. He did, did give up the home run. Fairbanks comes in. But again, when you start playing this hit or miss, you know, matchup game, then you're playing Tampa Bay's game, and they're very comfortable to do that.